one time. Welcome back to Tiffany Teaches Painting, starting with the Mice and Mystics series. I hope you all have been enjoying the series uh, and painting along, and as always, if you ha are following along or have painted some of these minis using these techniques, I would absolutely love to see your in-progress stuff or like just the finals of it, how you ended up painting things, and you can always find me on t Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, uh, links down below in the doobly-doo, as well as like on the screen right now. In this episode, we're going to talk about the spiders. Spider. There's only one spider. Uh, it is one of the larger figures in this game, which means that it's easy to paint. It's pretty straightforward. You have a lot of space to move around. It's not like those tiny little roaches. However, it also means there's only one of them, and so you don't really have a lot of practice on this one. But there's eight legs. So you could practice on each leg. Uh, we're going to introduce a technique in this video which is called layering. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using mini layers of similar colored paint or even the same colored paint. Very thin layers repeated over time in an area to build up some color and also produce somewhat of like a gradient technique. And so we're going to do that with this spider on each of its eight legs in addition to its main thorax body section. First things first, these are the paints that you're going to need to paint the spider. And um, for the most part, the yellow is sort of an optional. You could get away with using light brown, but I like the added pizzazz that the uh, yellow gives these figures. Also, instead of painting this figure with a dark brown, you can use a medium brown, which is what I used for the figure that I was painting in these video clips, but I have painted with the dark brown before and it yielded these results, which I think are a more dark, ominous mini, so it kind of depends on if you want to have a darker final product or if you want to have a lighter final product, either way. I feel that the medium brown best highlights the gradient effect that we'll be creating, which is one of the reasons why I used that for painting in this series, so that you could more easily see the color changes that we'll be making by doing our layers. Because this mini uses lots of thin layers of paint to build up this color gradient that's going over time, it's very important that you have patience when painting this mini. While there is only one of them, it's probably going to take about as long to paint this single mini as it did the roaches, though you should know a little bit more about painting now so it'll go a little faster uh, overall. But yeah. The idea with this series is that every video I will introduce a new technique for painting miniatures so that by the time you finish painting all of your Mice and Mystic figures, you'll have a good repertoire, rep, 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 you'll have a good repertoire of painting techniques that you can take out and use in other miniatures as you're painting. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so first up, we're gonna do a base coat on top of the primer that you should already have for these figures. We're just gonna do a light brown, and I use Reaper Mini's um, Leather Brown, I believe, for this painting, and I do a four drops of paint to one drop of water ratio. If you're using a Citadel's Miniatures Paint, I would recommend maybe doing four drops of paint to two drops of water, maybe a third drop of water. You want it to spread easily, but you also want it to cover pretty decently. We're not going for absolute full coverage like we were with the roaches, we're just going for, we want the legs, the tip of the legs to be fully covered, but everything else we want to just have like a nice base brown layer and shade. So once you go ahead and cover all of your spider, making sure to get under the legs, which are kind of the trickiest part of painting this miniature, you can just let it sit and dry for a little while while you mix up your next batch of paint. The next batch that we're going to start painting is all of the layers. So with this technique, we're going to be starting with somewhat of a thinned down medium or dark brown. It's up to you if you want to do dark or medium. Again, here are the differences between the figures. The one on the right I painted with a darker brown as the base color, and the one on the left I painted with a medium brown. I feel that the one with the medium brown is a little bit more interesting to look at, and it really highlights the gradient effect that we're going to be creating with these layers, but the one on the right, the darker one, is a little bit more creepy and ominous and terrifying if someone just happens to leave it out on the table where it shouldn't be, and thus causing someone to freak out and maybe try to squish your mini. Don't know if that's something you want. 
Alright, so with this technique we're going to have a single pool of paint that you're going to keep adding colors to or water to as needed as we're building the depth of this paint color up on the minifigure. To start with building this pool you're going to do four drops of paint and two drops of water if you're using thinner paint like Reaper's Minis. If you're using a thicker paint like Citadels I would recommend doing four drops of paint and three drops of water. Go ahead and make sure you mix it up really nice and again just a reminder I'm using medium brown in this painting segment but you could use dark brown or medium brown it's up to you. When you start painting with this mixture it's very thin down so it's not going to provide a lot of coverage and it might be hard to see where you've painted but you can know where you've painted because there will be a nice sheen to it where the paint is still wet and that is how you will know where you have previously painted. So with that knowledge in mind and knowing that you're not going for full coverage here let's go ahead and start painting this figure but we're going to start painting not the entire figure. For the back part of the spider, the big meaty thoraxy part that stores all the stuff that makes their webs, um, you're going to start painting about ooh, seven eighths from the end of that. So you're not going to paint the end that has the stinger. You're going to start a little bit past that and then paint back towards the body. And with the legs, you're going to leave the very tips of the legs unpainted. You're going to leave them that brown, that light brown that we did on the previous step. And you're going to start painting from, I guess, depending on the leg, it's either just past that last knuckle or right on that knuckle up the rest of the leg. You're going to paint the center body part, which I don't know the name of that on a spider that all the legs are connected to. You want to paint the head around the shoulders and like the underside of the legs as you can get them. Don't worry about not painting the underside of the legs from here on out. It's just kind of like a nicety that you'll have if you remember to paint them occasionally. With this painting technique, every time we add a new layer of paint, you're actually going to paint less of the figure. You're going to move up the legs a little bit. You're going to move up thorax a little bit and we're going to keep doing this as we add layers and darken the color of our paint until we're just painting that center part of the spider that the legs attach to and just like barely up the legs and also the head. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and paint the next layer. You want to make sure that your previous layer has dried before you paint the next layer and I know that is kind of difficult because these are such thin down layers of paint, they're very wet, so they're going to take a little while longer to dry. You can blow on your figure to help expedite this process, but really patience is sort of just key on this. Once that first layer of brown has dried, you're going to go ahead and paint another layer of the same brown. So now you're just going to step it up a little bit less. So now you're just going to paint like on legs that you painted just to that last knuckle, you're going to go just to the other side of the knuckle. On legs that you painted over the knuckle, you're going to just paint the knuckle. Like you're just going to move every leg up a segment every time you do a layer. So the thorax, you're gonna paint like six eighths of the, th the thorax now, right? Do you see the pattern that's happening here? That's what we're doing, that's the idea. Always make sure on each layer to paint that middle part with the where all the legs attach and also the top of the head and also the like shoulder bits where they're like crouching. And yeah, that's that's basically this technique is you just do these thin layers that take a while to dry but you back it up every once in a while. While you're painting these layers, you don't wanna paint across the body, you wanna paint in the direction of motion. So you wanna paint down the thorax, up the legs, not really across. You wanna do smaller strokes. You don't wanna make it a solid line of paint. That'll make this really obvious where the gradient is later. These like edges and borders of where you're painting one layer versus where you had previously painted a layer don't need to be precise. And it's actually better if they're not precise. So keep that in mind as you're painting your layers that it's okay to go over the little line a little bit and mix it up on occasional strokes. You're going to keep painting these thin layers of brown paint, moving your way up the legs and back down the thorax, including the little center part in the head every time, until you get about four eighths or half the way done with the thorax. So I guess that means you're doing three layers of this brown? Yeah, you're doing three layers of just the brown. Then on your next layer, you're going to go ahead and add one drop of black and it's going to be a very tiny drop. And actually what I would recommend is you put the drop of black further away in your palette and then just put a little tiny bit on your brush and bring it in and mix it in with your brown pool that you have going. If you need to add some more brown paint or some water, feel free if you've run out, but you really want to make sure that you're only darkening this paint pool by a very small amount. Then with your new slightly darker brown, you're going to go ahead and paint the next very thin layer, starting at that halfway from down the thorax. 
you know, up the rest of the body and then halfway up the legs and up. So yeah. And the head, don't forget the head and the shoulders and the, yeah, you get, you get the idea. Make sure with these thin layers that if any paint pools, you go ahead and quickly move that around or get that out. Keep your towel or sock nearby so that you can wipe it off as needed. You really don't want things pooling in these crevices, even though they will help to find the detail. That's what we're going to use the wash for. These thin layers are primarily just for adding color very subtly that will build up over the figure. And you should actually already start to see that gradient effect on areas of the thorax that have already dried. So after that first layer of slightly darker brown, you're gonna do another layer of slightly darker brown by adding another tiny bit of black to your brown pool. So you're gonna go even darker now. So with your even darker paint, go ahead and paint the next section of thorax down, which I believe would be 3 eighths down. Um, and yeah, don't forget to do the middle part, don't forget to do the legs, don't forget to do the shoulders, don't forget to do the head. Pretty straightforward. For the next layer, you have a decision point, and that decision point is do you go a little darker on your paint, or do you just paint a second layer with the paint color that you already have from the two thirds or two eighths measurement down? And that's really up to you, but either way, if you are darkening it a little bit more, just remember do a tiny bit of black, mix it in with that brown, and then do the thin layer starting at the two eighths from the thorax back and two eighths of the legs back. And remember, it's up to you if you go darker or not. If you decide to not go darker, go ahead and do paint that additional layer using the paint that you already have without any additional black. So now you should have a pretty awesome gradiented spider, which actually has some really awesome depth to it. And we're gonna make it a little bit more dynamic by just adding a very, very tiny amount of red to your paint, your paint pool that you have, and doing the 1 8 layer of the spider with that reddish dark brown mixture. And I mean very, very subtle red. And on this part, again, you're just painting the head, the 1 8 of the thorax, and the main center part that has the legs attached to it, in addition to like just slightly up the legs. Also, you don't want to forget the shoulders on the underside that like frames the head. And yeah, that should be all you really need to paint on this thinner layer. Like I said, the hardest part is just waiting for these layers to dry considering they're thinner and they have so much water in them. There you go, you're done painting the main body of the spider. All that's left now is doing some nice details. What I did is added a good drop of red to my brown mixture, like an actual drop of paint, red paint, and mixed it up really well. Then I used this darkish, brownish, reddish color to go ahead and paint some nice, creepy details onto my spider. Specifically, I painted a little red stripe on the first and second knuckle of each of the spider's legs, and then I freehanded like a creepy face ish silhouette on the back big thorax part and then I added like an even creepier little silhouette of like a person slash meeple on the head see if you can see it here but basically like I did the head of the meeple silhouette thing on the back of the head of the spider and then I did it's like body on that on that center part where the legs connect to I think it's a nice creepy detail of like a spider this big that has some interesting pattern Feel free to add whatever patterning you would like to your spider, be stripes or dots or smiley faces or whatever you would like. Get creative, maybe Google some creepy spiders, add some, add some cool detail with this red paint. Then for a final detail, I went ahead and cleared my brush off really well and then I grabbed just bright, bright red paint and I painted just like almost a dry brush right on the top of the second knuckles for each of the spiders to really make those knuckles pop. I don't know why I did that, I just felt inspired. Maybe you'll feel inspired to do something extra creepy on your spider. Last up, final details. So now you're gonna paint the eyes of the spider, which there are four of if you can find them all. So the first two are very obvious and then the last two are like on the top-ish part of the head. I painted the eyes of my spider black and I just did a little dot of black paint with my fine tip brush and painted the little circles of the spider eyes. And then for the fangs of the spider, I actually went ahead and did yellow paint to make the fangs really pop out from the face, which I think is a nice added creepy touch. It also makes the spider look happy. I don't know if yellow fangs makes spiders seem happy to you, but uh, I think my spider's really cute now because of the yellow fangs, so there's that. But when you're painting the figure, you'll notice that the very ends of the fangs are like hard, fingy things, and then the top part of the fangs are more of like a, um, 
fuzzy-ish texture and so I went a little lighter on the yellow I did a thinner layer of yellow paint on this fuzzy part of the top of the fangs and then for the hard bitey owie part of the fangs I did um, just a good solid layer of yellow so it's very obvious that these are yellow fangs so yeah after you finished painting all the little detail bits on your spider and they're looking delightfully creepy, it's time to do a wash and bring it down a notch. The wash will help bring out any details that we kind of painted over, including cracks and crevices of the figure, and it will add a nice shadow and depth to areas of the figure that maybe we couldn't reach with our colors and brushes. It'll also just bring the entire color of the figure down just a smidge. For this figure and all figures moving forward, I use a wash called Eggrax Earthshade, which is from Citadel Miniatures, and I really love this wash. It's basically like a dark brown wash, and it's ink-based, as opposed to the ones that you would make yourself with, with paint, which is just paint-based, acrylic paint-based and water. While we could make our own wash, I really like how this wash adds just right out of the box or well bottle a really nice earthy darkening tone to our figures which i think is very relevant to the mice and mystics game and style and so i think it's a good investment to buy just a small bottle not a big bottle like i have here but a small bottle of this wash that you can get from any miniatures paint store um, to add to your paint supply collection it really is worth it i feel this was one of the first like painting specific technical things that I bought and I love it. I use it on basically everything. If you'd like to make your own wash for this figure and all figures moving forward, that's totally fine. You can do what we did with the roaches, just I would use a dark brown for this wash, this figure. So a dark brown with maybe like half a drop of black. So I would probably do like two drops of dark brown or brown paint and then like half a drop of black and then as much water as you put paint, mix it up really well and then use that as a wash to cover the entire figure. And I mean, yes, the entire figure. Whether you're using your pre-made wash or the wash Agrox Earthshade, which I'm probably saying wrong, you wanna make sure that you get all of the wash into the cracks and crevices and help to find the fur details on the thorax and just different areas of your spider. If it's pooling too much in one area, wipe your brush off a little bit and use the brush to suck it up out of that section of the figure and maybe redistribute it. This is a good time to make sure that you're painting the underside of the legs and you really want to darken like along the thorax kind of where it's sitting on the base and areas like that. I personally feel that there's no such thing as overwashing. Well, I mean there is, but it's super easy to pick the wash back up and just put it back on your palette or wipe it off the figure. Um, and it's really easy to see when you've gone overboard with the wash and it's easier to go back than as opposed to like doing a wash and going very light on the wash and then later regretting it because washes add a ton of detail and they really help bring out the details that the sculptor meant for us to find when we painted these minis. That's it! That's your spider! Once it's done completely drying, which I know is the hardest part, from all of the wash, you the last step is to just paint the base, like the base that the figure is, is sitting on. So um, I, for this series and for the rest of the figures that I painted in this series, used a base color of two drops of shadowed stone with one drop of white. So two drops of gray with one drop of white. And I decided that that would be my base color for all of the figures I painted. So whatever you decided to be your villain base color back in the roaches video you're gonna want to go ahead and mix up that color again and paint the base with that the trick with this base it's actually probably one of the easiest figures that we will have to paint the base of in this series because um, the legs are up you just want to make sure that when you're painting around the rim of the base you watch out for the legs that are actually crawling off of the base which is creepy to think about but don't worry the spider's plastic and just remember that even though you painted it to look super realistic and awesome it's still just plastic you may have to paint one or two layers of your base color onto the base to help cover up any of the paint that you might have gotten on the base as you were painting. Please make sure to not get any of the base paint onto the figure itself, but if you do, quickly wash off your brush as fast as you can and then just take a brush with a bunch of water on it and dab it on that area where you accidentally got the paint on, wash it around a little bit, dry off your brush, and then use your brush again to pick up that water and it should have diluted the paint so you could spread it out and get it off of the area it was concentrated and then you'd be back to normal and you could just keep on going. So, yeah. 
worst comes to worst, you painted this figure and you could always just repaint a section if the paint dried before you realized. So don't freak out. It's basically what I'm trying to tell you. That's it, we're done. That's it, there's nothing else. This is, this is it, there's nothing else on my list of what I have to tell you about painting the spider. The spider should be gorgeous and done and beautiful and creepy. And I hope it is for you. If you painted along with this video, please send me pictures of your super creepy spiders. I would absolutely love to see pictures of your spiders that you painted for the Mice and Mystic set. Just, just don't send me just pictures of spiders, please. Just don't. Um, you can find me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook at the one tar. Um, I th actually think Tiffany Kyrez is who I am on Facebook. But all the links are down below in the doobly-doo, so that's sweet. And yeah, I would be really interested in that, especially if you're painting along with future episodes. Speaking of which, the next episode will be The Centipede. And The Centipede is the next episode just because it is another larger figure and we're going to be building on this layering technique that we used in this spider, but we're going to do it in a more uh, granular controlled area which will add some really awesome effects which I'm super excited to show y'all. So these are the colors that you will need for the centipede which is uh, next week's episode. So there you go over there. You'll notice all the colors that you need for the centipede are the colors that you needed for the spider. How interesting! You actually won't need a lot of diverse colors until we start getting into the mice, which have like colored cloaks and things like that. So um, for the villain characters, you can paint most of the villains with this simple palette. The rats, which are the episode after the centipede, we do have some uh, additional colors beyond these, which are for the weapons that they carry. But those colors will be used in the mice as well because they all have weapons. So don't worry about it. And that's that. I hope you found this episode super helpful and thank you for watching uh, and sticking through it. As I said previously at the beginning of this video and at the end, I would really like to see any of the progress that you've made on your Mice and Mystics figures. And yeah, feel free to leave comments. If there's anything you would like to see done differently for next week's episode or anything like that, please do let me know. And otherwise, I think that's it. These videos are brought to you in part by my Patreon supporters, so if you didn't know, I do have a Patreon and every dollar does help. As a Patreon supporter, you get early access to these videos and other videos that I create for my channel, and also you just get the warm fuzzy feelings inside of supporting a media creator, so there's that. <laughs>